What's up, Joe 200? How are you? It's, it's uh, Doc Walsh here. So it's uh, um, Wednesday, May 25th, 2022. Um, very cool. Looking at your guys' introductions. Just keep going in there. Okay, doing the discussions. And remember, the, the, the golden rule, you know, one primary post, and then you're going to do three post on your classmates. You know, just a little interaction. It doesn't have to be crazy, okay? Um, Pura Vida. So I'm down here in Costa Rica right now. Um, so I'm teaching multiple classes along with my wife, Julia, who is here as well. And uh, so um, and uh, so this is a May master class that we're doing. It's a two-week immersion into the Nasara region of Costa Rica, where the longest lived people in the world live. So this is a blue zone, all right? Check it out next year. Um, it's it's been uh, it's been really a lot of fun. We got um, we're in the tropics, so we got a little rain, but it's okay. You know, you just kind of work around it. We are we all went surfing in the rain yesterday, so I'm just gonna flip it around, all right? And you can see it's kind of kind of rainy right now, um, but there you go. So that's that's the drill, all right? Pura vida, all right? Very cool, huh? Awesome. Okay, all right, turn around now. And I'm going to be doing my lectures from here, all right? Because, yeah. hey, this is my job, man. we got to do this stuff, all right? So, okay, so um, for those of you that are kind of just tapping in, new to the class, um, um, again, everything that we do here, communication is key. If you have any problems, please email Julia Walsh, okay? That's listed in the syllabus. Um, every single communication we do through here, so this is my my how-to lecture, so how to navigate the course and how to get an A in the class. And then these were um, this week's first two lectures that I went through. They were a bit long. Uh, I'm going to tighten the belt today, shorten things up, okay? And uh, and then we'll be giving out some more how-to information in terms of navigating the course. You should just, you know, play with this like you do any website, just to get a feel of what's going on. Um, we'll be opening up these exams as indicated here. You look in the syllabus, you get the timing on that. Um, you can click right into here. You can start your critical think thinking assignments anytime you want just by reading the directions. Um, I'll be giving you kind of a short how-to on that. Okay, I'm going to click right in here. We'll take a look real quickly there. Uh, as you can tell, you know, we're at the Nosara Beach Hotel, and it's a pretty special place, you know. Um, it's awesome. Whoops, sorry. And uh, anyways, uh, so this is my how-to do this project that I did from last semester. I'm going to replace it with a new one, but the reality is nothing's changed. Okay, so if you want to, like, like I said, work ahead and do this, go to town. Same thing um, with the second critical thinking assignment. Okay, so we scroll back up here, right there. And these are just, you know, you gather data and you and you write about it because you're you're going to be super worldly about your knowledge about aging and just how it influences society. All right. So, the, so again, the, the second one right here, June uh, June, uh, June 20th, you can scroll down here. And this is for all my B majors, my BUADs, okay? And um, we get down here. And, uh, again, this is where you upload it. We will check everything on, uh, on um, turn it in. So don't, don't plagiarize because then, then we're going to call in uh, the district attorney's office, okay? All right. All right. So um, right here, uh, this is the... Um, the second one, okay, there's my how-to video right there, okay, that's a change, and then you're going to be financial planners, you know, and you're going to see what happens when the stock market is raging. Sometimes it, it, it adjusts like it does right now, but don't worry about that, it always comes back, okay, awesome. Okay, very cool, well, let's, let's, let's get into this. So we did um, our analysis of global aging, we're just going to look at some, some issues that we kind of honed down into looking at... Um, Looking at us, looking at the United States. So we always give two options. Sometimes links don't work. So this is actually a link to the Pew Research Foundation. Pretty simple stuff. I mean, but when you are studying anything, okay, you have to categorize it, okay? You're going to compare A and B. You've got to come up with category A and B. And that's the, that's the, the bottom line there. So this is all about looking at um, uh, generations, age groups, age sectors when you were born, okay, and then and then we follow you through. Like I said earlier, you know, my baby boom age sector, you know, um, we looked at the numbers and then we made social modifications in anticipation of me becoming 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, and every step of the way you you use those numbers to predict and you make change. Okay, so that's what this is all about right here. And then we start comparing. 
you know, what people are going through. And that's what this is all about right here. So go ahead and read this first article. article. I think, you know, hopefully the website's working. We'll tap into it right here. There it is. Yeah. So it just, you know, is again, so, uh, and then there's a PDF file there in case the websites don't work. So this is just, you know, just, you know, describing what went in to, and this is a great place to work, guys, if you ever want to do some research at the Pew Foundation. Um, and, um, so it just, you know, it's it's going into something as simple as what do we call you guys <laughs> when we're categorizing things, right? So that's what that's all about right there, okay? Um, shoot, you know, uh, I was called a baby boomer. Should I call you? Know, you're not a millennial. Some of your parents might be millennials, early millennials. Um, should we call you a post-millennial? Should we call you I generation? And what everybody um, has come up with, and this is through just documentation and internet reference. Um, um, you guys became Jay-Z, Jay-Z, <laughs> Generation Z, that's, the, you know, so that's just, you know, news reports, um, it just, the more and more hits, and it's, and then it's stuck, okay, so that's what that's all about right there, right? and that's all how it happened, okay, and so then we kind of look at, you know, um, the, the defining of the generation, where were you born, okay, how, are you a Gen Zer? Are you a millennial? All that kind of stuff, okay? Here I am right here, 1956, boom, okay? Here's my wife right here, okay? She was born in 62, okay? This is not me right here, that's my parents. She's a silent generation. So I was 56, she was barely a boomer, all right? But still in there, okay? Um, I'm six and a half years older than Julie, okay? And then on and on and on, okay? And here you guys, my Gen Zers, and this is when you were born, okay? Very cool. All right, so that's what that's pretty straightforward. That's what that's all about. How we went about uh, defining that. Okay. All right, so then we come down here to the next part. Okay, and so once we've kind of defined it, okay, let's look at some trends that are happening in our country. Okay, um, that um, are really shaping the world based on what you guys are doing right now. Okay, what I did on and on and on and on. Okay, so again. We have the PDF file, or we have the interactive, okay, website, you know? All right, so we're looking at these, you know, demographic trends, and demography is just, you know, looking at groups of people and saying, what's going on here? What are they up to, all right? Um, so, um, again, even though, though um, you know, I as a boomer didn't have a lot of children, okay? Most boomers had a lot of kids, okay? Um, so my parents, the science generation, had a lot of kids, okay? And as a result, then, there's this, um, you know, kind of pyramid of more and more and more kids. So millennials are outnumbering us, and so you're a bigger, millennials are a bigger voting block, super important politically and sociologically, okay? Um, if we look at that, okay, the fact that people are living longer, again, we took a little hit with the, with, sadly, with the, uh, with COVID, but that people are living longer and it's kind of difficult to survive financially. It's a very competitive world here in the United States. What's happening is, you know, you know, back in the day, you know, I graduated from high school in 74 and I said, see ya, and I, and I never returned home, you know. I roomied, you know, I, it, it, life was cheaper back then. I'm just telling you straight up, okay. Uh, so I, I went to UC Irvine. I, I, I then lived in Huntington Beach, and I lived in, in Newport Beach, and it was it was doable as long as I was working, and which is what I did. And because um, I was really poor, my parents really, you know, I, I got through school it was loans and working. And um, uh, but you see right here, and then this is the trend through 2016. And if we go up here, okay, you see that it's you know approaching. You know, 25% now people are living in these multi-generational households, okay? You know, my kids are 26 and 20, and and they're living with us, you know? Um, um, one of them, you know, is uh, is going to UC Irvine graduate school. The other one is uh, is just returned home from USC as a junior next year. Um, and that's the reality. And, and, you know, if we had had our act together and had children early on, there's a good chance to make ends meet. And this is actually the future, my friend. We're going to go full cir circle and we're going to be like our original cultures. Many cultures like are still like this in um, uh, Asian Pacific Islander cultures and, and uh, Hispanic cultures where you have um, three generations living together, which is a cool thing. You could have your grandparents living in the same household, and I think that's the future for my real estate developers. You're gonna make these cosmic, 
multi-generational communities where there then will be child care for you as you have children and are growing through your career. But then at the same time, we'll have elder care, okay? Uh, rather than putting your older family members, older community members into assisted living or nursing facilities, there'll be this really neat community care. And that's what we're all about here down here in Costa Rica, okay? Because that's what they're all about. They don't put their people into assisted living. All right, cool, 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 cool. So you can see this is, you know, uh, looked at percentage basis, also looking at it in terms of, of raw numbers, okay? Um, and what are the other trends that are happening? Uh, so you guys are less likely to get married, okay? So it was in, there was more traditional, but even I waited a long time to get married. So I was uh, 31 when I got married. People are like, of course, I had the luxury of having a wife that was almost seven years younger than me. Um, Alrighty, um, and so you can, you know, again, you look at, at um, all these different uh, uh, populations, okay, um, where they, uh, all across the world, so this is kind of leaving the U.S., but you can see here, there, there is um, uh, different areas of significant growth of immigrants, okay, so, so we're looking at all these different areas that have, that have kind of poor standards of living, and so our immigrant population into the United States is taking the best of the best. That's the, that's the, at least the, the concept. And, um, and you can see, um, uh, again, the growth of immigrants. Cool, 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 cool. All right. So these are all trends. Okay. So we see international ri rivals are rising. Exactly what I was talking about. Okay. And there's, you know, different political scenarios that, that shape that as well. Obviously we look at, at, um, uh, having a President Biden or a President Obama versus a President Trump. It's all, it's all very political. All righty. Very cool. So those are the trends, okay? And then the last one here is just to kind of look at, at um, um, uh, again, there's a PDF file and, and, a, uh, and a URL here. And then how we kind of compare. And there's just a really cool, you know, show some curiosity. This is, I was telling uh, the students at, at breakfast today that, uh, Basically, as a parent, I always put vegetables out for my kids, you know, beautiful, wonderful vegetables. And if they eat it, then they're, they're healthy and, and, and then it's a win for them, you know. That's what I do. If you don't want to eat it, then that's, that's your problem, okay. So in terms of these resources and education that you experience in this class, you know, I'm putting out the veggies of information, you know, show some curiosity, have fun with it, educate yourself, you know. All I can do is provide the resources, and, and if you're not going to um, um, buy into it, well, then that's your loss. Okay? Awesome. All righty. So we can look at um, um, each of the generations, millennials, Gen Xers, boomers, the, the, um, the silent and the greatest generation. And, um, and what, what, we, what we are, are going to then look at, again, we see the... Um, the, the, uh, this is looking at race and ethnicity right here, okay? Um, we, can, we can look at other things too. How about marital status, okay? Boom. All right, so you can see um, differences in marital status, okay? So, so my parents were, were um, uh, in 2017. Um, they, uh, a lot of them are married, okay? Um, but we also see um, uh, quite a few that um, are uh, widowed, okay? Because they're getting older, okay? Very few never been married. Very few, okay. Compared to you guys up here, all right. Um, this and again, this is not you. We could show this to you as a Gen Y. Um, you can see that the, the marital status has dropped, okay. Uh, boomers. So maybe your parent is a boomer like me, okay. Sixty-six percent of us are married. Uh, Eighteen percent separated, divorce, um, and you can just go down the line. Uh, Ten percent never been married, and seven seven percent are widowed, okay. Um, we can look at um, some fun ones, all right? Look at how, you know, times have changed in terms of women getting educated, okay? So, um, so let's just, you know, let's just drop into some form of college diploma. And you can see that uh, women back in the day, my parents' generation, they didn't go to college, okay, on average. More in boomers, but not enough. And it's creeping up and up and up. And, and then you guys would be even bigger, okay? Um, you know, are you living here urban? Okay, all right, that, that's what metro status is. You know, there's been a transition there, okay, um, where, um, uh, you know, more and more people have gotten more and more urbanized because, you know, the, the, the jobs out in the country, they disappear. We used to have a family farm and Julie's family. Guess what happened? You know, the, um, 
corporations bought out their family farms. There's no way that people could still, you know, work the land, and so everybody moved to the city. And that's kind of, you know, that's these are again things that you can look at. You can look at household incomes, you know, and uh, you can see how this is is changed right here. You know, it's interesting here that, that these people are still early in their careers. Okay, compared to these people, this is the, the this is the sweet spot of making money um, in this 37 to 52 years of age group. So this is when you're you know you you've made it in your careers. All right. So if we had you guys up, you would see that these have grown. And then again, this is 2016. You will see that these incomes are on average. These are just you know looking you know on average. And then you guys would be somewhere over here where you're still in that growth mode. All right, so that, that this kind of is it's kind of a, a cool way to look at things. Okay, um, and now we chart it out. Okay, so these are just charts looking at each of these guys. So they didn't go through Gen Gen Z years. I mean, and that's okay. That will be coming. But just looking at um, all the generations, and we're looking at education. Again, you can see how, how striking the change was for women. Okay, so it's it's basically just like the interactive, okay? This is the defining the generations like we, we talked about right here. Um, and it's just more verbiage on stuff we looked at. So how cool is that? How cool is that, okay? Awesome. All right, guys, so um, yeah, so that's what that's all about. Uh, I forgot to say this, but you guys should know the drill. You should always open the reading quiz at the same time, all right? And just go boom, boom, boom. Sorry, I'll, get, I'll do that next time, okay? And then we have a, a discussion, a consequence of um, having all these generations living, right? People like me, you know, I'm 66. I don't, I, I, I don't plan on dying anytime soon, okay? And so um, you can get in here and you can look at again this 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 concept of um, so you know the millennials, which could be my kids, um, and uh, their you know we can look at theirs, uh, their you know their home ownership. Look at the baby boomers. Look at the the generation between in between. So these are the three um, uh, uh, generations. Okay, and um, so we're looking at you know two time points right here. So we see we see right here in 1990 through 2019. We see right here this this right here would be 1992 through 2019, and then this is looking at 2008 through 2019. And you can see that um, getting into housing early. You have home equity, so you have all the home wealth. You know, so that's an issue for you guys. Issue for you, okay? And that's what these articles are about, okay? Um, about um, uh, the, the shrinking housing market and affordability. Sorry, that's the legacy we pass on to you. I want you to consider this. We can then go into to um, SoCal prices right here. So these are a couple of articles right here from the um, Orange County Register. Um, this is a really cool LA Times article right here. Um, that and and what I did is I, I just kind of listed some of the numbers to wrap your mind around. You know, we bought our house in Laguna Niguel in 1998. All right, so that is uh, 24 years ago. We bought it for um, 430,000 dollars, and it is now worth two and a half million dollars. You know, and that's the legacy. You know, has have incomes kept up with the the rise in, in home value, home equity. No way, no way. And so that's why you got to wrap your head around multi generational housing. And again, you this is um, a, an amazing tool for you to look at um, if you want to. It's a really long document, but maybe you guys are going to get into real estate development business. Um, you're going to be considering housing. And this is this ongoing report uh, from Harvard that just talks about housing. And there's a huge issue with people when they get older if they don't have a steady stream of income then they sadly have to tap into the value of their homes, okay? And uh, and then there's a lot of people that have been left behind, okay? If you basically have rented your whole life and, and you're a senior, and now rents are going up, but your income isn't changing, then you enter into crisis and poverty. So that's, you know, we have a big housing crisis for the have-nots in our country and, and really everywhere else, all right? So these are all the things to kind of look at right there. And uh, these are charts that are, uh, again, uh, supportive of what we're talking about here. And you can look look at that, uh, you know, again, this concept of, of uh, 2038, almost 2040, and, and the projection of older people that'll be living alone, which is really scary and really tragic. And this is why I, I think if we could uh, take on a little bit more of the Pura Vida culture and, and look at, um, communities helping each other and also um, um, uh, uh, looking at uh, at least your nuclear family looking out for each other. That's going to be the ticket. So that's what your discussion is all about there, guys. Okay, man. 
So it's always great seeing you guys kind of virtually, but that's all good. Um, uh, email me if you have any questions. And um, what I'm going to do is uh, there's my beautiful wife and my two boys. Um, um, what I'm going to say is I'll see you next time in Pura Vida. No. Guess what? I forgot to record it. Oh, there it is. Yeah, I thought I forgot to record it, okay? Now I'm gonna hit it.